Yes, yeah, amazing how they t suddenly appear after all these years. Well, said, they got to go someplace, you know. Yeah. So, like, uh, I I, th I always thought the black ones were the same as mine. That they would put white pit guards on. But right. then someone sent me a, a picture of, a, of an all black one that they found. You know. Well, as I said, I think there yeah. were three sets. I think yeah. there was black with a black guard, yeah. black with a white guard, like yeah. what you have, yeah. and, and this green, Exorcist Green, with a black yeah. guard here. Yeah. So, by the way, this is one of my favorite guitar players in the whole entire world, and he played with the Everly Brothers, which is... I mean, to, to Brits, they must have gone crazy, your friends, knowing that you were playing with Don and Phil. Oh, uh, well, that's true. I had a lot of uh, mutual friends, you know, who, uh, who were big Everly fans, you know. And who wasn't? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, quite a... You know, originally it came... I, I met them in 62, and, uh, well, I met Phil in 62, and he was playing the black one with the white pit guards, right. and Don... Was sick and went back to, came back to LA. Right. So Phil finished the tour off on his own, but then um, they came over again in '63, three, and by that time they were playing the, the smaller. Uh, Every the J185. Yeah, the, that the became the Everly, yeah. the J180. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, yeah. which was like this guitar kind of scaled down a little bit with stars on the fingerboard. That's right. Yeah. And uh, a little different pick guard setup and a different bridge. Yeah, I hated that bridge. Yeah. I, I had a, that with the, the adjustable one, the metal. Right. And, uh, the, the and the bridge actually, it was a heavyweight bridge that really didn't allow the top. The pick guards yeah. were thicker, the bridge was thicker, and it just yeah. didn't allow the top to yeah. vibrate as actually, much. Actually, yeah, these, this is a, it is a th thinner, so this one is 1959, and what it is is uh, um, the last gig that they did together before they stopped for about 10 years. Um, mm. They weren't getting along, and I think a lot of it is they were on the road so much, it just was wearing them down, and you know, they were getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> and apparently uh, Don, because he was so upset that it was going to be the last gig, uh, drank a bit of the gig, and he was uh, a little yeah. out of it, and he never really used to drink on the gig and stuff like that, but apparently this one he did, and uh, apparently he forgot some of his parts and some stuff, and Phil got so upset, now I don't know if he hit down over the head with this guitar or if he hit it on the stage and cracked it, and there's a crack, uh, actually a couple cracks that you can see by the pit bar yeah. there, and uh, the guitar player uh, that was playing with them, Dale, um, he said to Phil, hey, do you want me to go and have the guitar fixed? And uh, Phil said, nah, you can have it. And just kind of, you know, he was so pissed off. And the guitar has been sitting for 55 years. Yeah. And yeah. so here it is. And I had to call, of course, one of my favorite guitar players and the guy that's got the biggest connection to the Everly Brothers that I know. I said, you got to come check this out. Yeah, I'm glad to see it. This is uh, this is wonderful. It's actually in better shape than my black one because my, my, mine's got some cracks in it. And it's been, it really those guys didn't treat those things well, too well. Uh, well, uh, actually, Don loaned it to uh, Jerry Allison of the Crickets. Sure. He had it for a few years, and and then he loaned it to his buddy Tony O'K. Okay. and uh, and then. Uh, and then Don called him up one day, called Jerry Allison. He said, "Did I, did I give you, or did, did I give you that black guitar with the white pick guards?" He said, "Well, no. You, you loaned it to me. It's yours. You know." So, he said, oh, really? Oh, okay. So, he he, he gave it back to him, and, cool. and and Don gave him like the latest version of the Everly guitar with just teardrop pick guards. Right. So uh, Jerry, Jerry still got that, you know. Thought. In a couple of the videos that I saw, there was like a um, a 1996 documentary on the Everly Brothers, and the Crickets were actually backing them up on a couple shows. Oh yeah, Everly's. oh yeah, they did a whole tour. Yeah, yeah. They went to the UK, and uh, they used this. Uh, they they had these guitars on that tour, as you can see from those photographs there. Yeah. yeah. And they were the greatest duo, the most popular duo of all time. Definitely, yeah. And there's a lot of other good duos.
apparently number two, uh, which I would have thought maybe Simon and Garfunkel, but it's actually Colin Oates is the second most popular duo of all time. And then I would imagine Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, but the Everly Brothers stood alone. I mean, nobody was like that. Those tunes were great. And Boodle O'Brien and Felice Bryant yeah, wrote a lot of those tunes. And Yeah, they man. were very important at the beginning there. And, uh, and then when Don and Phil got the record deal with uh, Warner Brothers... They were one of the first acts, and it was a million-dollar yeah. deal, by the way. Yeah, well, I know. Well, it was... Uh, Apparently it was a million dollars over ten years. Oh, well, they didn't say that, but <laughs> yeah. it was, they said it was a million dollars, no, you know, which was like the biggest I've, deal at that time. I know, I found that out later. Yeah, yeah. it was a million dollars over, you know, split between two of them over over ten years, you know, plus whatever. You know, the taxes were horrendous in those days anyway. Of course. You know. Well, you know, the bands didn't always get to keep everything, so oh, no. it was it was yeah, rough. But, and those yeah. guys were out on the road just trying to make a living, you know. Yeah, back in those days, you'd... You know, the the uh, the artists got like three, three points cents, or yeah. something like that, which they split between them. Right. You know, so... <laughs> well, <laughs> they were, you know, that's why art uh, artists and uh, business people aren't always on the same page. But yeah. people are going to go, Norm, shut up, get Albert to play a few of the little oh. Everly things, you know, that... Oh, wow. uh, Fingers are a bit sore, actually. <laughs> Apparently, in that one video, they were saying that uh, when Bye Bye Love was originally written by Felice and Boodle O'Brien, mm. um, it was a lot slower. And they were trying to record it, and they couldn't get a good take. And apparently, uh, while we were taking a break, Don was out, and he started playing some Bo Diddley stuff. And yeah. they said, hey, let's incorporate that. And that's how yeah. they did it, yeah. and it became a huge hit. Yeah, well, he, he, he just discovered how to, uh, you know, to, how to tune the guitar up to a chord, yeah. doing all that Bo Diddley. What yeah. was the lick for Bye Bye Love? That's oh, well. He did a few, few songs there with this tuning. Can he use that tuning? Though? Yeah. Wake up, little Susie. He capoed yeah. up here. Really? On, on How about Bird Dog? It sounds like that was. Yeah, right? I'm not sure about that. It, so it sounds like it's pretty much um, regular tuning, you know. But so you imagine you've got a cake capo on it there. Some really uh, neat uh, uh, guitar licks, you know, that really I sold. I was told that you yeah. actually did some singing sometimes if one of them kind of bailed out. And oh, well, I, on the you were an Everly brother for a minute there. Oh well, yeah, when they weren't speaking to each other, yeah, I did a few gigs with Don. We did a a, a big Buddy Holly concert in London that Paul McCartney had put on. And uh, Don was there as a special guest, and I was there with the crickets. And uh, I'd already sung with Don a couple of times, you know, so uh, there's actually video of me somewhere <laughs> singing with Don. Uh, but he's right on the mic, and I'm way back, so you, you can't hear me very well, you know. But, yeah, I did. I did quite a bit. But uh, later on, when we, you know, the 25 years I was with him on, you know, on the tours, you know that uh, they did uh, T for Texas as a, as an encore, which, which Don would sing, 
and then uh, Phil would uh, join in on the chorus, you know, T for Texas, T for Tennessee. And he'd call me over, you know, uh -huh. so we were both doing it. So I was there with between the Everly Brothers <laughs> singing T well, for Texas. That could have been dangerous being in between those two guys. No, no, they, 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 they were all right most of the time. Well, Phil was always great, you know. Don, Don could be a little bit moody. You know, sadly, well, you know what? But being out know. on the road and being stuck in a bus or wherever, or hotel room on the road, I'm sure that gets difficult from time to time. I'm sure you yeah. experienced that before. You well, being such an easygoing guy, you know, I'm sure you'd be yeah. the, one of the kind of guys that would be good to have out on the road. So, yeah. uh, well, but, and one other thing about Albert, too, is, Albert won Best Country Guitar Player. I don't know how many times for award, and you're not even from this country. Five times, I got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guitar Player Magazine, yeah. That's yep. great. Yeah. Well, well-deserved, and uh, take us out with a little bit more, you know, if you can, well, I don't know if you'd be willing to sing a little bit and do something. Just keep a knocking. And, uh, oh, sure. And keep a knocking, but you can't yeah, tell me. So, uh, so Don uh, did that in the solo, you know, with uh, Floyd Kramer and Chet oh, yeah. playing Floyd at the same Kramer time. Was the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't get a single verse, a chorus, anything, just a little bit. Well, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you going to sing with him, Norm? Uh, I, that would ruin <laughs> it all for him. He'd be cracking the guitar over my head if I did. Sorry that I did that to you. Oh, it's but, right. uh, but, uh, You sound great, and uh, I'm telling you, this guy has got. You just got to look Albert up. He's got the uh, resume of doom, and I know Eric Clapton and all those guys worship you, and rightfully so. So thank you for coming in well, and looking at this. And no, it's great. Yeah, I wish it was in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you have one too, so you I have do. the black one. Maybe black you come one. in and one of these days we'll uh, get you to do another video for us. <laughs> okay. I've, I've got to say, actually, as, as well as the store's honorary Englishman, Albert's band, Heads, Hands and Feet, changed 
the landscape in England completely. It was uh, a little different to what other people were doing. It, there was <laughs> nothing like it, man. If you want to flip yourself out, check them out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The great Thank Albert you. Lee right here. Well, Thank you, Thank you buddy. Thank you. I, I really appreciate oh, okay. you coming appreciate in. It. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, my friend. Yeah. One of my old buddies, and uh, his wife Karen doesn't want to be photographed, but you know, here she is. There you go. Woo! All right. She's an old friend, too, and she's helped us on a lot of uh, our charity gigs and stuff like that for the Midnight Mission. So thank you for everything. That was amazing. Great. Thank you. That was great. Right, Have a look buddy. around now. See yeah, what, nice see what the kind of.